engage your audience in Google Meet. Now that we've discovered all the best ways to access, view and set up your Google Meet, let's take a look at how to get the most out of your attendees' engagement. Google Meet provides a number of tools to help engage and manage your audience. Breakout Rooms, a great tool to split up a larger group into smaller working sessions, set team assignments, or break into teams for ideation sessions. Polling, use the polling function to quickly understand audience preferences in an easy to manage interface with trackable results. Q&A, use the Q&A feature to manage questions and keep track of what has been answered. Avoid clogging up the message board, avoid multiple similar questions and give transparency around popular questions. Whiteboard. Save your post-it notes and capture your working session in a Jamboard or access existing Miro boards, allowing everyone to input, not just those holding the Sharpies. Let's look at the functionality of each of these activity features in turn. All the functionality that we are looking at is dual faceted. You will either be using it as a host or as a participant. You might be thinking, I will only ever be the host, but it's really important as a host to understand what your participants are seeing, so stay tuned. It is possible to configure the breakout rooms in advance from your calendar invite, but you can do the same live inside the meeting. Having worked extensively with training breakout rooms, I have a strong preference for pre-meeting setup, as even with a small group, live room creation is a big time eater and you are way more prone to mistakes when you are working live and under pressure. The breakout room function will allow for specific or random allocation to rooms. Utilize the timer to ensure that your meet remains on schedule and to keep your participants focused. Alternatively, you can manually end rooms. Drop into and out of rooms to facilitate work or instruct your participants to signal if they need your attention. This will save distraction from participants jumping in and out of meeting rooms. Either at the point of creating your calendar invite or any time before the event, access the calendar invite. Click the settings cog to pop out the call options window and select breakout rooms. Give the breakout rooms names as required. Again, from training, a hard recommend here as groups will rarely pay attention to the number of the room, but they will remember a name. Increase or decrease the number of rooms available and Meet will randomly assign participants to the room. If you aim to be intentional about room members, use the clear button to quickly unassign, then either drag and drop or type participant names into each room. You can use the shuffle button at any time to re-randomise. When creating rooms live in the Meet, you can see the pop-up is identical. However, as I said, for a large group, this can be really messy when done live. In the live breakout rooms as host, you will now be able to view a timer icon. Use this to create rooms that will automatically close after the given time period. Timers can be changed by editing the rooms once open and increasing or decreasing the timer. Once ready, click Open Rooms to prompt participants to join their respective rooms. You can monitor who has joined from the breakout room panel. Participants with yellow indicators visible under the main call banner have not yet joined the rooms. Once joined, the participant will appear in their breakout room and a green indicator will appear. Groups needing assistance can use an ask for help button. The host can use the join button to access the room and the leave button to return to the main call. Both are accessible from the breakout room panel. If you are not using or you wish to override the timer function, click the close rooms icon to give the in-room participants a 30 second warning before returning them to the main room. From a participant's point of view, a prompt to join a room will appear centrally and in a banner at the top of the screen, the join button will transform to a leave button 
to allow return to the main room at any time. Be aware in larger meetings, joining main or breakout rooms may trigger your microphone to be turned off. When your participants leave the main room, any existing in-meet messages will be cleared. Any polls launched in the main room will not be visible in the breakout room. Use of emoji and hand raising functions will only be visible to the participants within the breakout room. These will be wiped as you return to the main call. Any in-room messages will also clear as they move back to the main room. In addition, any use of the Q&A function whilst in the room will not translate back to the Google Meet main room session. Timed sessions will show a time remaining banner at the top of the screen. This will turn red as the room approaches the closing time. This red banner also appears in untimed rooms to donate the 30 second warning period after a host closes the room. The ask for help function can be found in the top right hand side of the screen in room next to the return to main call button. This can be cancelled if clicked by accident. The polling function allows you to build multiple polls to either launch immediately or to launch at specific points throughout the meeting. Make poll results visible to participants or keep confidential. Allow for anonymous or named polls. Close a poll during the meeting and receive poll results post-meeting. From the activities menu, select polls and start a poll. Add your question and the answer options. Add more options as required. Toggle on anonymous polling and launch or save the poll. Allow visible results by toggling the option on and edit, delete, or launch the poll from the poll panel. Results will tabulate as participants interact with the poll and when required, click end poll to close voting. Post meeting, any meeting artifacts will be emailed. Polls are created in Google Sheets with a cumulative results page per participant and a results sheet per poll launched. If a poll is anonymous, names will not populate, and if a poll is not launched, it will not appear. For your participant, a notification pop-up will appear and an activity notification will appear on the activities icon. Any launched polls live or ended will appear when polls are clicked. Participants can see whether a poll is anonymous, then select an option and click vote to take part. If the host has allowed, the results will be visible post vote. I've attended many sessions where hosts have used the in chat messages to allow participants to pose questions. While this is an option, it can very quickly become unmanageable. Do yourself a favour and direct questions to the Q&A function. You can actually switch off in chat messages when working in large groups in order to drive questions to the Q&A. This gives you a central interface to view and manage questions. It gives you sort functionality for new, old and popular questions. And the feature allows you to activate anonymous questions, which encourages engagement when discussing sensitive issues. Hide questions that are irrelevant and mark off questions as you answer them. Filter large question sets by answered versus unanswered to ensure you address all questions. Using the Q&A feature is simply a no brainer. Accessible from the activities menu, you will receive notifications when questions are added and all questions will be visible within the panel. Use the sort function to see popular questions and use the tick icon to mark questions as answered. Once marked answered, 
you can use the filter to remove these questions from the panel. In the case of irrelevant questions or questions that you will cover later in your presentation, use the eye icon to hide these from other participants. As with polls, you will receive a Google Sheet of meeting questions to review and follow up post-meeting. For participants, a notification and activity dot will indicate a question has been asked. Navigating to the question and answer panel, the participant can upvote a question or ask their own. Where allowed by the host, the participant can select to anonymize their question and then post. Participants can filter for their own questions and sort by oldest, newest and most popular. If they choose to delete a question, they are warned that the host will still see the questions, as this will appear in the post-meeting question report. But if they continue to remove, the question will not appear to other participants. Whiteboarding is available to hosts and participants equally. Google's Whiteboard product is called Jamboard. From the Meet window, a new Jamboard can be created or an existing board can be shared. Google Meet can be relocated into the Jamboard for seamless collaboration sessions. From the Activities menu, select Whiteboarding. Click Start a new Whiteboard to instantly create a new Jamboard and Share a link to all participants in the call. To share an existing Jamboard, select Choose from Drive to select an existing board. Click the Meet icon to relocate the call into the Jamboard browser window. And again, to present the tab into the Meet window. Jamboards could not be more easy to use. Click Set Background to find a range of default or potentially custom backgrounds. Boards are built of frames. Add more frames from the frame chevron at the top window. This functionality also allows you to move forward and backward through the available frames. Freehand draw with a pen marker, highlighter, and paint options. Each come with a range of colors. Add images from your drive, computer, or search on Google Images. And select a range of shapes in the Shapes menu. Images and shapes may be dragged to other areas in the frame, and highlighting a shape will reveal formatting above the frame. Insert sticky notes in a range of colors or a text box again with formatting appearing above the frame. A laser pointer is available to review with participants and to start over fresh use the clear frame button. So now you know how to grab your audience in your next Google Meet. Anonymously poll participants on important questions. Create a fun icebreaker to get everybody to know each other. Or quickly poll the group on what time to break for lunch. Use the Q&A function to fully address and manage a set of questions, allowing for anonymous questions and upvoting. Split a larger group into smaller teams to build solutions, discuss topics, or for qualitative sessions. In the post-its and the Sharpies, getting the group working collaboratively from their keyboards in Jamboard. Have fun with these activities and let us know what's been working for you. Make sure to join us next week to find out more.